dream of interstellar travel and the conquest of space, but for this reason we will never be able to leave the solar system. It is shocking that we seem to be stuck on this planet, and that with the prospect that this world will no longer be habitable in 100,000 years. But where is the solution? Do we have a chance of surviving in the long term and colonizing space after all? It is a horror scenario that scientists are serving up to us. In just a few hundred years, the Earth will be a hot greenhouse in which the oceans will have risen so high that large parts of the continental masses will have disappeared. Imagine an Earth on which metropolitan areas such as New York or Rio de Janeiro, Hong Kong and many others have simply disappeared. Millions of people have fled further and further inland. Diseases have wiped out masses of people. The animal world has also become more crowded and many species have disappeared. Oceana no longer exists. Hawaii only exists in people's stories, and cities are now located on the mountains that were once considered the highest peaks on Earth. This is inevitable if we believe science. U.S. billionaire and visionary Elon Musk is one of the first and, shockingly, only people to respond to this future scenario with real plans. Musk says we have to go into space if we want to survive. Who is right, Musk or NASA? Did you know that Elon Musk has plans to turn Mars into an Earth-like environment? The story is called terraforming and basically involves using a nuclear warhead to release the water deposits at the poles of Mars. NASA says this is not possible. But what hardly anyone knows today is that NASA had very similar plans in the late 1980s. NASA was pushed back by technical problems, financial restrictions on space exploration, and various failures such as the space shuttle disasters. The end of the story was that NASA no longer wanted to go to the moon, did not design any new spaceships, and abandoned plans to colonize Mars. It was only when Elon Musk came along that NASA woke up again. Today, the two want to conquer the moon together. Musk and NASA are working together on the Artemis project, which envisages a first manned lunar station in just a few years. NASA will devote itself to the scientific part of the project, while Musk will focus more on the technological and probably also the tourist part. The Lunar Orbit Station is also intended to serve as a stopover for Mars flights in the Moon's orbit at some point. It's therefore only a matter of time before humans land on Mars and settle there. But even Mars is not a permanent alternative. At some point, even the Red Planet will become too small or too uncomfortable for humans. Then we would have to leave the solar system because there are hardly any more worlds within the system that offer the prospect of habitable conditions. But it's a scientific fact that we can never cross the boundaries of the solar system. We cannot leave the solar system. Let's consider the distances in our solar system for a few moments. It is 150 million kilometers from Earth to the Sun. In astronomy, this corresponds to one astronomical unit. From the Earth to the Moon, it is 384,400 kilometers, and to Mars we have to travel an average of 225 million kilometers. The distances vary depending on where a planet is in its orbit around the Sun. Now let's take a leap further. The distance to Jupiter is already 778 million kilometers. It is 5.9 billion to Pluto and 100 AU or 14.96 billion kilometers to the edge of the heliosphere. Now let's take a look at our technology. The fastest spacecraft ever built by humans is currently the Parker Solar Probe, which is traveling at 700,000 kilometers per hour, and Elon Musk's spaceships are traveling at 27,000 kilometers per hour. The first Mars settlers will have to wait around six months in the spacious and comfortable starships before they reach their destination. This technology is already considered to be extremely advanced. If a starship were to travel to the end of the heliosphere, it would take well over a hundred years. A starship that is currently technologically feasible would take several thousand years to reach the next solar system. Does this mean that the dream of the interstellar human species is over? Or are we overlooking an important fact? And it is possible. Faster than light travel is possible. Who would have thought it? We will probably never leave the threshold of the solar system in a conventional spaceship. We have highlighted the reasons for this. It would take us far too long to get there by slowly overcoming the distance. If we want to become a spacefaring species, we need new technologies. For a long time, the warp drive was just a figment of the imagination of a few successful science fiction writers. But in the 1990s, scientists took the drive seriously and began to do the math. The first to announce that the propulsion system was purely mathematically possible was the Mexican Miguel Alcubierre. However, 
The mathematician was not yet able to solve the practical propulsion system. But science never sleeps, and there are now several concepts that have come closer to a solution. However, the biggest problem remains the fuel. Other physicists and engineers are certain that in a few years to decades, it will be possible to manipulate space-time using new laws of physics. These will enable us to abolish physical laws that were previously considered irrefutable or to formulate new laws. We may already be at the beginning of this development because, as you may have noticed, astrophysics is in a crisis of the century. The current observations of the universe by the James Webb Space Telescope are no longer compatible with current physical theories. The current changes in cosmology could also open up new avenues for physics that we have not yet seen. As a result, we may yet be able to enable spaceships and propulsion technologies that do not use the classic method of bridging distances, but instead manipulate space-time in such a way that we can simply slip through a space fold to any location in the universe. Space-time travel thanks to extraterrestrial technologies? It sounds crazy, but it's a fact that thousands of people on the planet see flying saucers every year. The story surrounding aliens and spaceships is currently becoming even more bizarre. Allegedly, there are more and more sightings of flying objects in the airspace around Earth that defy the laws of physics as we know them. At the top of the list of witnesses are fighter pilots, airplane pilots, and crews of ships. They spot missiles that are discus or disc-shaped, objects described as flying eggs, or even triangular objects that often appear in formation flight. Usually, eight to nine different flying objects are sighted and reported. The sightings and the confusion among fighter pilots have gone so far that there has already been a hearing before the U.S. Congress. In 2023, the former UFO Special Representative of the U.S. Army went before Congress. David Grush claimed that his superiors had lied to him for years. Allegedly, the military was in possession of several crashed UFOs, but concealed this fact. This statement coincides exactly with what the U.S. UFO leaker Bob Lazar claimed back in the late 1980s. Lazar claims to have researched UFOs and a previously unknown element in a secret facility. This element enables the overriding of gravity and thus faster than light travel or the manipulation of space-time. Lazar was celebrated by UFO fans and declared crazy by the authorities. Amazingly, Lazar also reported nine known types of spaceships. The military owns the UFOs and is allegedly trying to capture the technology for itself. This work probably began after the Roswell UFO crash in the late 1940s. So far, however, the reverse engineering of the technologies has failed due to the production of the mysterious element 115, which is required for propulsion. In 2003, scientists succeeded for the first time in artificially synthesizing element 115 in the laboratory. However, it was not stable enough to operate a reactor with. Bob Lazar's reports were confirmed to the extent that this element really does exist. In a stable form, which may exist elsewhere in the universe, the element could make the described drives possible. These stories show a fascinating development. In the late 1980s, scientists portrayed Lazar as a liar and Element 115 as a figment of the imagination. Almost 20 years later, the element has been discovered, albeit not yet in the stable form that extraterrestrials apparently use. If extraterrestrials really do exist, then so do their technologies. It's probably only a matter of time before we are able to invent exactly what these beings have invented. If you are now thinking that this is all nonsense and not compatible with accepted science, you should be familiar with the vision of Russian astronomer Nikolai Kardashev. Kardashev was one of the most renowned astroscientists of his country and his time. He created a scale according to which civilizations develop linearly in relation to their ability to generate and use energy. Factors such as quality of life, intelligence, and social level also increase with the ability to generate energy. He saw three types of intelligent species. Type 1 is still at the very beginning of development. Typical energy sources are unsustainable and harmful to the planet, such as our coal and nuclear power plants. Type 2 has mastered this problem and developed into a species that lives in harmony with its planet. Type 3 is finally so advanced that they can extract energy directly from stars. In extensions of this scale, we find species that will be able to control and manipulate matter. They have decoded the laws of the universe and have themselves become co-creators of the universe. They can create every conceivable source of energy and other species like us and move freely between the dimensions of the multiverse. These very high beings will no longer have a body like we do, 
but will have spiritualized themselves as far as possible. We are currently at the beginning of stage one on the scale, and if we are lucky, we will slowly move to stage two, but we will still have to master issues such as sustainability and world peace. So, faster than light travel, aliens, the multiverse, and interdimensional travel are not as unlikely as they currently seem. It all depends on your perspective. If we one day undertake space-time travel, we will still not fly beyond the boundaries of our solar system in the classic sense, but we'll use the exceptional physical conditions of other dimensions for space travel. Click on subscribe now because there will soon be even more impressive videos.